Okay, so now we need to clean up the annotation definitions and groups. Uh, is we go to that second dialog and we pick an annotation group, it's going to copy all that in there. I've had a lot of support calls where people will say, hey, I've made changes in my annotations and I go out and re-annotate my drawings and the changes didn't come through. Why? Well, because you got two copies of your annotation definitions and groups now. You've got one in your sheet C definition, which got carried over to your sheet that you created, and then you've got your master in your DGN lib. So which ones are you changing? Which ones are going to pick up? And that's the problem. So we need to clean those out. And so let's go over to uh, take a look at this. So again, we'll go do this and explore. And we'll just navigate down to our definitions, check all your categories. You really just do this once when you're all done. You don't have to do it between every one of these creations because it'll get redundant. Uh, the point is, you know, once you are completed making this, then you want to go through your annotations, your features, your element templates, etc. Make sure everything's clean, save settings, and compress file. Avoiding the undo command. You've been warned. Don't do it. It is, I don't know why, uh, but you got to think about everything we're doing in here. We're creating sheet models. We're creating drawing models. Uh, we're working with dynamic profile views. It's just not a good idea. And I can't tell you it's going to get you every time, but when you least expect it, that's the time it will get you. So I would strongly suggest to not use the undo command when you're doing any type of work with creating sheet C definitions. Uh, the icon's there, uh, but I'm telling you uh, from experience, don't use it. Okay, so I'm just pointing out, don't do this. All right, so that's all there is to show there. Okay, so now we're going to get into some stuff that's probably going to be new to a lot of you uh, that have done these before. And so let's talk about this. It is possible to change the name of the sheet C definition shown in the dialog without having to recreate it. And so I don't know if you all type like me, but sometimes I get a little in a hurry when I type and I misspell something or I realized that I had like a different naming schema somewhere down the road. It just didn't look good. Maybe I wanted to change, you know, the alphabetical sorting order, whatever. And in the past, the recommendations was, well, just, you know, go delete that, recreate it. Well, all this is doing is displaying your saved views. And so let's take a look at how we can change that name. So if we navigate over to our saved views and we open those up, so under, I think it's under our view drop down category there. Yeah, I'm just showing you here, you know, that, that hey, let's rename this one, Plan 50 Scale. So we we'll go up to our view and open up your Save View tools. All you got to do is select it, and rename it. That's it. You do have to restart the product because it won't refresh the dialog right away. So I could come in here and type in a new name, 50, Plan 50 Scale Sheet, just to show you a difference there. Notice it doesn't change. As I said, it won't until you restart. So I do an exit. So now when we come back to it, and now you have the name change. And so if you want to change those names, you don't have to kill everything anymore. You just go to your save view, rename it, and you are good to go. All right, we can do a lot of other renaming too that I'm sure a lot of you didn't know about. We can rename the drawing model. We can rename the sheet model. We can rename the name group and a lot of other different things. So let's take a look at that. Uh, we're going to take a look first at re uh, renaming the uh, connected drawing and sheet models. I'll go ahead and kick this off. We'll just go into our models dialog and it's literally, you can just select them and rename them if you want to. So you can do it in a dialog, you can do it in a properties panel. But I open up the properties panel just so you can see that, you know, kick in on the properties. You'll see it when we rename it in the model dialog. So there's our plan sheet. We take the word scale out of there. Take our 50 out. So now we just got plan sheet. So you can see that that doesn't hurt anything to rename those. And we go back over to our save views. We can rename this one too. You just saw that, right? So we'll repeat this one just be called plan sheet now and that's it for that one so just to show you that's okay to do that uh, we can also rename the uh, name boundary uh, for better organization 
And so, you know, you could imagine, right, if you get, you know, 50 or 100 name boundaries in here, it could get a little bit overwhelming. And so we do have uh, and do support that. So we can come in here and it gets time. We'll go over to our name boundary tool manager. We can drop down and on our name boundary group, we can select here. And by the way, if you expand that, you won't get to this rename. So that's why I didn't hit the little drop down arrow on there. It won't let you back into it. So uh, make sure you don't expand that uh, to be able to get to that rename. So when I close that dialog and come back in, you'll see that that now just says a plan sheet. You can also rename the assigned plan. I just had called it plan one. You can give a description if you want to. So you pretty much have full flexibility in terms of what you want to rename. And again, it won't hurt anything. Now, in my example, I'm kind of putting everything in one DGN lib. I talked about how you could do, you know, multiple DGN libs. I've just got one default model, one default 3D model. You can arrange or have different design models in here too. So you have a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of what you can uh, do here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.